Hello, folks. Welcome to the 2014 ESL1 Cologne Counter-Strike GO Championships. My name is Scott. I'll be your host today to bring you some amazing Counter-Strike. We started the day yesterday with 16 of the top teams of the world. Four of them, unfortunately, had to go home. They at least took home $2,000. The rest of the crew is still battling today and the rest of the weekend for their cut of $250,000. Not a bad prize purse. Yesterday, we also saw some of the new maps in play. We also saw an amazing double overtime, as well as we set a new Counter-Strike GO record of 272,000 of you fans watching the events from home. Amazing stuff. Today, obviously, again, we finish out our group play. Half of the, the teams today will go home, four more, leaving the quarterfinals and the finals. Today, we start off with the number one team in the world, NIP taking on the number 10 team in the world, Epsilon. That being said, we're not going to wait any longer for this to start. I'm going to throw you to the one and only Anders and Semler. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Scoots. This is it. It's day two, Anders. We are going to see who gets our first seed and second seed in the groups. Oh, if yesterday wasn't good enough, today is definitely going to top that up, I think. Now we have some seriously sick teams left, and to start off with this kind of matchup is going to be too exciting, I think. No, it's perfect. This is the perfect start to the day, because yesterday, Group A, same thing, right? But we didn't actually get to see Nip play. They took on Wolf. Instead, we ended up watching Hellraisers versus Epsilon. Pretty big beating that Epsilon dealt out. Now we have to see if they're going to be able to bring the same level of intensity here in their first match versus Nip. I mean, first team in the world. This is, this is a tall mountain that they're, have to, they're going to have to get over. It definitely will. But then again, NIP have had a bit of a mountain of themselves to climb, climb, climb just because of, uh, of how much of a slump they've been in. Yeah. Gfinity, not a big success for them. ESCA land, not a big success for them. Now they're at the next major tournament. And they finished second in the last two major tournaments. That's it the seems thing. like it is about time that NIP sort of resurrect themselves and get back into this. No pressure, right? No pressure at all. Like, that's, that's, the, that's what we have to be uh, wondering about right now. Are NIP going to be up to snuff? But let's go ahead and take a look at the groups real quick, because we have four groups, as Scooch said. And let's find out which four teams have actually been eliminated from the tournament already. In the first day that happened yesterday, we started bright and early, 9 in the morning, and got to see all these fine teams in action. But Group A, this is the one we're talking about right now. Ninjas in Pajamas, Epsilon Esports, Hellraisers, and Team Wolf. Now, Team Wolf grayed out. Those are the guys who couldn't quite make the cut yesterday. They went up against Nip, and uh, they went up against Hellraisers, and, it, well, it was, uh, it was a bit brutal. Yeah, I mean, there is nobody in, the, in any of these groups that is guaranteed to go through. No. The time, that time in Counter-Strike is past. No one can feel safe any longer, and certainly if you come as the, bo the bottom seed, you really do have to bring uh, something huge to make it out. That's, that's the thing. I mean, we're talking about a global event here. We have, a, like, a team from India. Granted, they weren't able to put up much of a fight, but the thing is, is like, this is their chance to get on the biggest stage in CS history, pretty much. Yes. I mean, this is the second major of the year, but already we've had a record number of people tuning in. The community has blown up since Katowice. And, I mean, we're only in the second day, guys. This is, this is how exciting it is right now to be here at Gamespawn in Cologne, Germany. Yeah, it is going to be such a sick game, this one. And already they are doing the, uh, the ban here, as we can sell just uh, from, from this really cool camera we've got going on, showing us a little bit about who's banning what. I love this system. So actually we can sell the overpass was just banned out by Epsilon. Interesting stuff. Oh, no. Mirage, oh. Nuke, Inferno, overpass are gone. And Cobblestone is going random. to be played. Cobblestone, one of the two new maps added into the pool here for this event. This is one of two. Cobblestone and Overpass, two of the maps that were just put into this new seven-map pool. And it will be on Cobblestone that Epsilon and Nip face. Now, this has very serious implications for this one. And I, I mean, we were talking about the, the map you know, selection beforehand. Yeah. And I said I thought it was going to be Cash over House of Cobblestone. Yep. For a simple reason. Obviously, Epsilon not going to play Nuke against NIP. No. NIP almost certainly not going to play Inferno against Epsilon. No. Considering yesterday's performance against Hellraiser, 16-1 from the French team. And it wasn't like Hellraisers were playing badly. Epsilon no. were just so strong. So I'm not even surprised that we've ended up with this uh, selection. Dust 2 is always a tricky map for both sides, but I actually think NIP is going to be scared well, they have, too. They have history there. The last time that, De that they played Dust 2 versus Epsilon and IP, they lost 16-14. It was close, yeah. but it was a best-of-one scenario again, and it was at G3 just a couple weeks ago. So they weren't going to take it there. 
cobblestone getting picked because the way that this works in the best of one system, guys, in case you're just tuning in today, you missed yesterday, this, uh, you get two bands basically per team. And then out of the three remaining maps in the pool, they get randomly picked. You get one out of those three randomly picked. So cobblestone will be the map that everything gets settled on here. We have SF on our screen right now. I mean, SF actually, that's, he had a large part to play versus Hellraisers yesterday. Epsilon's first match of the day, that 16-1 crushing victory that they gave out, him walking down the B site. And now in the background here, this is really interesting and very important as well. Peter, former SK member, long history in Counter-Strike. And he is in a position here where he's actually going to be able to coach the NIP team and yeah. talk to them while they're in the game. And this is a huge thing. This is something that's been talked about a lot in the scene lately. I mean, articles have been written up, Lurpus, and then counter articles, and it's just been this back and forth. But right now, PETA is actually pulling a Karn. He's in the VoIP with the team. He's gonna be able to communicate live with them. And he's already expressed, uh, I mean, his plan is basically exist, you play your game, you make your calls, but don't worry about what comes next because I'm gonna be watching Epsilon, I'm gonna be figuring it out, and I'm gonna give you that information during the freeze time. I'm gonna tell you what I see. And so this frees a lot of the NIP uh, players to really just focus on their games, focus on getting the frags, because PETA's, you know, he's, got, he's the eye in the sky. He's looking over their shoulder and he sees the big picture. Yeah, and the advantage for, for having a coach in this game is phenomenal. Monstrous. There is no doubt about that. It is so big, and, and we're going to have to see if that if NIP can actually make uh, full use of it here. But really simple things like just getting the timing down right, having a sixth guy to tell you it's time to go. You're both in the yeah. right position. Go on my queue right now. Well, it's going to make a big difference. That's the question. You know, Is he actually going to be able to be giving that information out? or that, Because another thing here is that this is actually a very recent change for NIP. I mean, they've only had a couple weeks, really, to be able to work with Peter, it was a couple weeks they get right, contacted him, said, hey, do you, can you do this for us? And, you know, talking with Peter before, apparently he was on vacation. He had to go and find a PC somewhere to be able to sit down and watch the games with the teams. So they haven't really had that much time to start developing it, but he's really confident, Peter. He sees, he's already seen some minor changes that he's mentioned, and the team has already started to adapt and make the changes in their live games. So we'll see how effective they are here now during this match where first seed of the group is on the line. Yeah, this is a really big thing. And the problem is for both teams that in the in the last match of this group is Hellraisers waiting. If you lose, you have to pay Hellraisers who have put in something ridiculous like 160 hours in one week playing Counter-Strike. Obviously kept their games open while they've been eating and sleeping, yeah. but they have been practicing something like 10 or 12 hours a day, the yeah. CIS team, and that you cannot ignore. Now, the other thing is, I mean, they're a real threat to Nip. Nip, when they got this group yeah. draw, you can think, okay, you know, we got Wolf. And you're, if you're thinking about this like this, you're like, okay, Wolf, very clear underdog throughout this tournament. Fantastic, we have them in our group. Oh wait, we have Epsilon who beat us in a best of one at G3, and we have Hellraisers who really made us work to get that best of three win at DreamHack Summer. These are two teams that are going to put a lot of pressure on Nip. So going into this already, Nip are thinking, well, we already have very two, two very tough opponents in our group that are capable of taking us out. We have to be on our A game. And just getting here earlier, watching them set up, they're focused like laser beams right now, Anders. They, they didn't talk, they didn't say anything. They, they kind of like waved at me, nodded at me, like the Florent gave his nod, and that was it, right? Then they go right back into the game and they are very focused right now, Nip. They, they yeah. know what's at stake. And for me, and this feels so strange saying, because Nip used to be the most uh, dependable team, the most consistent team out of all of them. Mm -hmm. You always expect NIP, especially on LAN, to do incredibly well. But right now, I feel like I have a better idea of how well Epsilon are playing than I do NIP. We know they've been putting in the work. We know they've been really hardcore boot camping up until this point, and they've been ready for it. But the question is, is it actually enough? Because we're not just talking about as a team. We have also some individual performances that have not been up to snuff, um, amongst other things, Get Right being one of the, the really big ones. So I'm excited to see how that's going to end up. But I actually think we are about to get into the game, ladies and gentlemen. So the first game of the second day here at Gamescom 2014 ESL 1. Let's get it on. Oh, yes. And it's still early, and they're just opening the events. Don't worry. Those seats, they're going to fill up. We're going to run out of space in here. It's going to get so hype. But we are live in the game. It is the pistol here with ninjas in pajamas starting on the CT side, on the defense, and Epsilon Esports on the offense. And already Forrest, he gets the first kill. USPS clicks away one, but Soxy strikes right back, and it brings it back to a four on four. And 
That is not a favorable trade. Forrest is one of the best pistol players in the world, but so is Shoxi. So Shoxi's still alive. Forrest is not actually just in terms of who went down there. I think that does make a big difference. We'll see. NIP have a pretty even spread across the map on the CT side here. One mid, one B, two at the A bomb site, and the bomb is making its way to the A bomb site right now. And Fuflaren is holding it here. Epsilon not wasting any time. 50 seconds left, and now they are a go. FX Joe with the kill, but Shoxi does go down. Fuflaren looking for a second kill. Out of bullets. Gonna get dropped. Kiyoshima with the headshot. Shot, and now it's going to be down to get right here. One on three, he goes down, and it will be Kiyoshima with a great double kill and the round for Epsilon. Very quick round, in fact, not wasting too much time there. 35 seconds left, but still, Epsilon, they figured out how to get out mid control, essentially. Not mid control, but slope control, essentially, going into that A site. But they, this is something we were worried about when we first looked at Cobble, because we have to emphasize how new these maps are. We have zero demos to go off of, zero pro games. The, the teams, it's like a horde of gold that they've been hiding from everybody. They don't want to share their misers right now. They don't want to give away the slightest bit of information that could help their opponents figure out what they've got planned for these new maps. So going into this has been very fresh, but Nip electing to use a very passive hold. Once Forrest goes down, Fiflarn was just sitting on that A site and not really putting up too much of a fight. He got one kill, but he really needed to be uh, moving a bit more because he ended up getting closed in and Epsilon really mm. are not a team to be messed with, seeing as how they just delivered a 16-1 victory to Hellraisers, a beating to Hellraisers yesterday. We know what they're capable of now. GMX will open up the second round. Exist actually with a really good return and doesn't get a second one, unfortunately. They do not have armor on the NIP side, so they're just going to go for some C-Seds and get ready for the upcoming fourth round, which is going to be in a, you know, a little while. And actually, that makes me think, the fact that NIP did not invest into armor makes me think they might actually just go for some really heavy artillery, which is something that when we were watching this game, this map, I buy power versus yeah. Fnatic, the AWP had nowhere near the effect that we thought it was going to have. No. So I'm wondering if NIP feel, feel differently about it. It wasn't until the second match with I by Power where we started seeing the, the, uh, the AWP, the SCAR-20 come into play. They were getting really nasty with it. But this is, uh, I mean, this definitely says Nip, you know, they're on the CT side. It's a heavily CT f uh, favored map from what we've seen so far of the two maps that we got to watch played on Cobble. We've seen CT sides just get rounds and rounds and rounds, comes out very far, like nuke score lines, basically. You know, that CT favorite. That's what we're talking about here. So we expect Nip to not freak out too much about giving away three rounds. They're just going to get the guns that they need, get those AWPs, get right maybe with the SCAR-20, and then just lock it down from there on out. So Epsilon, they got that start that they needed. They got the pistol, and they're going to get, they should get three rounds out of it. And that's really going to give them a bit of a, bit of a boost of confidence going into the rest of this half, seeing as how, well, you know, they already have three on the board. Yeah, such a good start for Epsilon, picking off on uh, where they left off yesterday and wanting to take that first seat here in Group A and be the first team to go through to the playoffs in the whole tournament. No one is through right now. We're going to decide right now who it's going to be. Nice shot from Exist and almost a second one. Kyushima could have easily gone down there. Get right, not connecting with the C set 75. But if you flare and will and almost drops a second one, this is not bad at all. Forrest is going to pick up a kill here on GMX and now it is a one on two. And if Kyushima is found, it's a one on one. Of Kiyoshima way too low. This is well within lethal range here. Forrest can just land a shot. He's going to get smoked off, so he has to change his position up. Look to perhaps come in from a different angle on upper, but really the B bomb site is a pretty much a big choke point. You're really gonna come through like one spot. So Shoxi, you know, they've smoked off one of them. Now they can focus on, on Skyfall, the room that we're calling basically the drop down and uh, the main entrance to B, but that's not gonna be a, a real issue here. Shoxi finds force as he tries to sneak out and Epsilon will pick up that third round, but that was, I mean, you're right, a very expensive round for Epsilon. Very good work done there by Nip. I could have absolutely, I mean, Exist got almost two kills in the beginning. Yeah. If he had dropped two, I think probably NIP would have won that round. And that's just with pistols. We do see the AWP picked up and it's on Fiflaren, which is, with NIP, not really a guarantee, but I don't mind the fact that they start off having it that way. Obviously, at some point, they could put it on Forest if they wanted to. We've even seen sure. it put on Get Right. Oh yeah, Get Right's even gone back to the AWP. I mean, we saw that on when they played Nuke, you know, and we were all kind of scratching our heads. But really, the two main oppers that we're oh. going to be watching are Fiflarn and Forrest. And Fiflarn already starting off strong, picking up FXO, who is basically Epsilon's full-time opera, and we've already seen what FXO is capable of with that sniper rifle. So Fiflarn getting that first frag on him, getting him off the board, is huge for Nip. That's a heavy player that's been removed from the map already. FX Joe has been such a terror in this game. So just in the in the few weeks that he's been in it, he's really made a name for himself. So you're right, dropping him not at all bad. 
And NIP coming from this with a kind of a different setup from what the other, from when we saw I by Power Fnatic playing, because they are actually putting Forest, it seems like, dedicated down in the middle, not in the window room, but underneath there. So we'll see if Ash is actually going to make a big difference here. Fiflaren falling back to safety, and right now, 45 seconds left for Epsilon to get something onto this round. Onto this round, they have to try and sneak their way in, essentially. I mean, they're going once again towards that B site, which is where we see the majority of the action actually happen. Uh, Nip putting two guys at A seems like the, the right call to make, seeing as how really the focus has been B, B, B most of the time for all the T rounds that we've seen on this map. So we'll see if SF can actually find something. And he does get the headshot on Fiflarn, but Forrest will get him right back. And Freiburg stepping in, everybody getting a piece of the action. In fact, for Nip, a team ace comes through. But that was a very fine uh, fourth round. The big hurdle there for Nip, and they get over. I'm intrigued. That seemed like a, a very well coordinated defense from the ninjas in pajamas. Definitely did. It's hard to tell if Epsilon just managed to pick the, the wrong approach for that particular round or if NIP really have studied it as much as it seemed. Now we'll mm -hmm. have to watch more rounds before we make a final judgment, but that was definitely good. And Epsilon, because they lost so many rifles in the, uh, in the third round, they actually can't afford to buy. There was no bomb plant in this round that we just saw, so they are out of money. Pistols is where it's at. And of course, a deagle on Kyushima. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Give it to Kyushima. I mean, he had a hell of a performance on that B side on Inferno CT side versus Hellraisers yesterday. So we know that everybody is in good shape for Epsilon. Right now, it's not really doing him too much. Forrest is just catching him as they try and make their way through to the slope onto A. And he's going to oh. get a double. Fifth Lauren helps him out, but the damage is done. Only losing Forrest. But Forrest gets three kills. He's going to be pleased with that. It's a real patience shown by Forrest. Um, the temptation when you have that M4A1, only 20 bullets, USPS only 12 bullets. Mm -hmm. The temptation to reload too early, and if you do it, Epsilon will definitely take advantage. There's not enough time to reload. So the fact that he never did it, he just pulled out his pistol, even with two bullets left, he just waited, and I think that was the right move. Right. But FXO now has an AWP, and this is the man to watch. As we said, you know, he made a huge entry onto the scene when he recently got picked up by Epsilon, uh, replacing Mistu on the lineup. You know, they needed an AWP and Epsilon. They found one of the best ones in France and clearly one of the best ones in the world because just right from the start, I mean, he already started top fragging for Epsilon, just doing crazy things with the sniper rifle. So Cobble being a very, well, wide open, huge map, the AWP could be very powerful on it. We've already seen that yesterday. And Fiflarin, you know, he got his first frag in that fourth round. Or not his first, but his first frag with the sniper rifle. Starting off this round, FXO actually did tag Fiflarin with a mm -hmm. leg shot. So he's down to 18 points of health. GMX taking in a little bit of damage. And um, they're still... The problem with this map, actually, from the terrorist point of view, is that it's so big that moving around takes a lot of time. So that's what we saw from I Buy Power and Fnatic. Sometimes they end up just running out the clock, basically. Yep. And you can't afford to do that. You need to move fast, but you still need to check everywhere. Yeah, and this is this is the real thing here, is now, is now they're going to be resetting their position. I like this from Nip. They're, they're seeing it coming. There you go. Piflarin gets the first frag, takes out FXO. And FXO is the linchpin here for Epsilon. They're really counting on him finding that entry with the AWP. And look at Forrest. He's the little king of everything up here. Has his own tiny fortress spots the shadow, but SF still takes him down. And Gerai will take make sure where that Fiflaren picks up a second kill. Is he gonna repeat? He knows FX Show is out there somewhere out in the woods with a sniper rifle waiting for him. And Kyushi must close. They're moving up. Fiflaren is gonna go down, and it's now a one on two for Freiburg coming in right from the B bomb side. He's up in that connector area, and moving out into the bomb side. They're not spotted him now. It's a one on one. Freiburg moving up against Kyushima. And can they pick up this kill? This would be huge for Epsilon, but the bomb is down. Freiburg does not get it. Kyushima with a great double kill and it will be Epsilon to take a fourth round and NIP, I'm not sure they well, they probably have just enough money to force it up here but it's not going to be too confident and actually, yeah, they will be able to they, buy They it. should be able to buy, right? They, they have the money for it but again, they're going to have to spend everything they've got here. They do actually have enough to be able to get Fiflarin with that AWP again but what really happened there is that Fiflarin, I mean, he got two big frags in that round. That was great work but the the position that he holds on that A side at that point is so vulnerable. As soon as Epsilon passes a certain point and start getting close to that site, he's exposed from everywhere. He's going to get cross-fired down. And we saw the effect that that had. You know, as soon as Epsilon break the line and get onto that A side, Fiflarin just gets taken out immediately. And they do manage to turn it into a two-on-two -two and soon a two-on-one. So Epsilon just with a really strong performance there in that round. But that bounces it back right now. Nip, oh. they pick up two, but there you go. Fiflarin, he starts off strong here in the fifth, or the Look seventh. Look at the map knowledge coming into place. He's definitely been practicing this. You can you can tell right now that NFP have done their homework. That is very cool. 
that is a, a big tell, a big sign that NIPR uh, are, are well prepared to play on Cobblestone. No, Cobblestone, it may, the main entrance essentially is on the left side there. We have A apps, so that's one main entrance to get in. And then uh, other than that, you have to go through Slope, which is this huge exposed place. So we really expect Epsilon to be funneled more towards B, which is where we saw the majority of the action yesterday when I by Power were playing the map. And now, once again, it looks like Epsilon are just going to start sneaking their way out here. But there are three players alive on this site for Nip right now. GMX trying to creep in. No one spotted him yet. He's actually getting really far in before spotted and exist. Will take him down. That's unfortunate. Second one not going to happen. And actually, look at this. Freiburg and Gerard are going to fall as well. Forrest all the way from the back. Looking to see if he can pick something up. And there's also Fuflaren holding with the AWP. A lot of flashbangs, a lot of smoke. Can he pick up the kill? He's scoped up. He's also going to be alone now in a one on three. And the bomb will be going down here for Epsilon. Yeah, I've really, at this point, Fifth needs to just kind of back off and play very safe. They need to hold on to this AWP. I mean, he is in a 1v3. He knows damage has been done to Epsilon, but Epsilon have had the time to set up the Triangle of Doom on this B site. And they're even on the hunt right now, Epsilon. They want to get this gun off of Nip because they know that Nip are hurting for money. They know that they don't have a whole lot of cabbage. And FX Joe finds a great headshot, takes him out. And this should mean that Nip are going to be forced to eco. Epsilon getting a crazy number of rounds at the beginning of this half. If they get six rounds right now on the, si on the T side, it, we saw how difficult it was to get rounds on the T side of Kabul yesterday. If they're able to get a very strong uh, lead here right off the start, the pressure is going to just come off of their shoulders because they know they have the easier half to look forward to afterwards. Well, we think so anyway. We, we're not 100% sure. It does feel like it should be. I mean, in 1.6, it definitely was a very CT-sided map. And from what we've seen so far, if you play correctly, you should get the majority rounds on the, on the counter-terry side. But I think it's still too early to pass, you know, final judgment exactly yeah. on how these teams are going to be playing. So right now, I agree, Epsilon off to a really good start. Six and two is... It's good if, you know, I guess no, no matter what map it is, you're doing Based on job. what little data we have, right? We'll say it that way. What yeah. little info, what, what little we've seen in these maps, because we have to emphasize just how new they are. I mean, the teams have hardly had a month to practice them. And so what we're going to see is kind of just, you know, coming down to aim and coming down to the basics here. We should see very vanilla play on both of these maps. Not seen overpass on the mainstream yet, but it did get played yesterday. We just had uh, two cobble maps to go off of, but now we have to see exactly how Epsilon decide to handle this anti-eco from uh, their side, because we've seen how effective Nip are with the CZs up close. A lot of angles that they get to hide behind, and Epsilon could be running into a blender right here, and there you go, Freiburg gets one, he's not gonna get two. Oh, exists. He actually picks up an AK here and can't connect with the spray, so the bomb site is going to be lost. That could have been a very dangerous situation for Epsilon. They've almost lost four members. It could have been nearly Shoxie left alone at this point in time, but Epsilon managed to stabilize, and this is obviously very important for them. These anti-eco rounds have proven to be so important in the game, and they will finish it off with a kill on Fiflaren and get right both. So now 6-2, and NIP's economy, well, they will have enough to buy and even go for a glass cannon orb if they feel like it, but... I think they're going to stick with the rifles. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, they, they have to basically. They're limited on the money. They can't even get full nades right now. That's the thing. One kit picked up on Get Right. So he did manage to get a kill, uh, at least in that Antico. So he should be, well, he has a little bit of bonus money to work with here. But now we have to see what the kind of setup Nip are going to go for. And once again, it's going to be two guys waiting on A, three guys setting up at B. Smoke should be going down. But Nip are waiting quite a bit of time before they do use those nades. So that's good. They want to burn time off the clock, seeing as how they have so few of them to work with right now. They want to try and hold on to them as long as possible to really put the pressure on Epsilon, play the time here, force Epsilon into an uncomfortable position, not, not the other way around, obviously. And the Frenchmen have been moving slowly across the map, so I don't even blame NIP for, for waiting as much as they are, but you're right, it's a really good point because that does make a big difference on any map, but obviously, uh, especially on a map like this where you have kind of small chucks going in from the different areas. Get right with the opening kill on GMX is a nice start. If you flare in, instead of the AWP, he's now hiding in this connector from, from long to mid, basically, and he is going to pick up the first kill on SF. He's going to realize that there are more people coming. Exist with a kill actually helping out. Forrest with one more, and now Kiyoshima, who's been doing so well, is going to get picked off by Forrest. So a nice double kill, and NIP uh, holding on to that round rather well. Yeah, timely rotation there from Exist. They picked off GMX very early there, so they were able to get the info that they needed. Like, okay, well, there isn't actually anybody over here that B that we can see. And just to be safe, Nip rotate Exist over to that A site. And the crossfire set up there between Fiflorin and Forrest was very effective, as we saw. So Fiflorin with the crucial first kill as they come out of A-Apps towards that slope area. But then afterwards, they're able to lock it down. Very strong round there from Nip. But that's, that's what we need more of, essentially. We need Nip basically to lock it down from here on out. That's what they need. They need the remaining six rounds in this half, essentially. So we're in the 10th round now. 
But Nip, they're not going to be happy unless they can pick up 9-6 here. That's, that's what's at stake right now, a perfect remainder to this half. There's the task ahead, and it's not an easy one either. Sapsalon can still buy even after losing a round like that. FX Show with an AWP, and there is one on Fiflaren as well. And FX Show has no fear. You can just tell, and this is very much his playing style. Like a couple of other sort of iconic orbs, this is this is what they're like. Some of the there's still the mentality going in to playing with the sniper rifle. If you start showing fear, it's not going to work out. Doesn't get the shot there, but could have definitely been an opening, and that would have been. On Fee, who was actually there in the middle? That was Forrest. That was Forrest, yeah. Forrest playing the mid-area. If Florin has taken over AAPs right now, he's looking down the hallway, as we can see here, making sure that this one point of entry, essentially, I mean, that, that is a very narrow choke that Florin can hold with that AWP, which makes it so powerful. It's kind of like B-Aps on Mirage, right? You get that AWP up there, you're going to be in for a very sad time. Now Epsilon decide they don't want to have anything to do with a site this time around. They're going to group up and gather for a B-Rush, but... Again, three members here holding solid for Nip. This is going to be very tough. It's, there's so many angles to check for Epsilon as they come rushing out. And Freiburg already starts off strong. He's going to line up for the spray, and he gets two. Exist gets one. Yeah, but they still need to hold on to this site here. Kyushima is low. Oh my god, Kyushima, are you kidding? Three kills in quick succession, and it's going to be a two-on-two -two now. Forest and Fifarin, they have the health advantage, but Kyushima seems to be on absolutely rare form right now. The bomb will go down with just five seconds left on the clock. There's a great grenade to drop shots, but it is exactly two seconds too late now. Kyushima, one-on-two, just defending this bomb. He's going to have to go for the ace here. He's got the AK for it, but he's not going to connect. Forest will take him down, and that will be another round for NIP, but... What is up with Kiyoshima? He's got 16, 4, and 4. He's outfranging everybody yeah, by a mile and a half right now. This is the power of Epsilon, really. They're all coming into their own. With the addition of, uh, of FXO to the lineup, that takes pressure off of Shoxi. Shoxi no longer has to, you know, carry the op for the team. He's, he's a, more able to just make sure that communication is flowing on the team, that everybody is able to just get the info that they need and execute, execute, execute. And this opens it up for GMX, for Kiyoshima, for SF, to have more liberty in their play. And this is the result. Kiyoshima, I mean, yesterday had a fantastic play day versus Hellraisers on Ep on uh, Inferno just completely obliterating them, and he was definitely at the top of that scoreboard. Now, today, again, versus NIP here on Cobble. So getting that plant is good, but it isn't just enough to be able to get a buy out of this. But Epsilon are going to be perfectly happy to hang back and just try and do as much damage as they can. Nip are the ones who can't afford to spend any money right now. I definitely agree with that assessment. And now they actually do rush into Skyfall and uh, and trying to see if they can jump get right. They did so successfully. Fox, uh, sorry, Shoxie are not trying to... Uh, Trying to do too much more than get a kill on Fiflaren if he can, and the C set is almost enough to bring him down. But now the cavalry has arrived, and I think that's going to be quite enough to uh, to deal with shocks here. Eight bullets left in the in the clip, and I think he's going to probably go down any second here. So a decent round from NIP exist picking up a quad kill, and it will be five six. I feel like get right. You know, he's at the bottom of the scoreboard right here with four kills, Freiburg two. Mm. But I think actually this is more a result of the position they're playing and not so much a result of their individual performances right now. Yeah. They are kind of in a spot where you either come up huge or you die very quickly. Exactly. That's the, that's the thing, right? The, right now it's kind of like uh, awkward positions. They're getting smoked off a lot as well, which is uh, something that Epsilon are really going to. But uh, also, if they get overwhelmed in the positions that they're playing, which are, I believe, Get Right's playing Skyfall, not quite sure. Yeah, he is. But, um, you know, that, that's the kind of thing. It's like either you hit your shots or you're going to get completely just run over because three guys are going to come jumping down on your face, pretty much. So not a fun time for Get Right, but... Nip still securing a round, and they're one round away now from tying it up, but Epsilon have now got the money to go for a full buy here. And the French team is trying something different. This time they're actually just all funneling down the middle, see if they can just overwhelm Forrest here. He's behind the rock just waiting, and there are a lot of people waiting for him. GMX will open up, get right quickly, rotating over. They need to move fast. Smoke's up for Epsilon. It's a really good smoke, just trying to zone NIP out of that bomb site. For Flaren, it's on the other angle. He's going to get taken down by Kiyoshima. Exist coming in. He drops to SF, and now get right and Forrest. Oh, Freiburg, sorry, are left, and just going to be Freiburg. NIP ending up sort of going in one at a time, and I'm not sure Freiburg should even think about doing this one on four. Uh, one on four, if you could find a pick really quickly here, but everybody's at full HP nearly, apart from GMX on Epsilon. So it's going to be very tough for him. He decides to get out here because basically if he can find that pick, if he could catch somebody off guard, and he almost does, nearly drops Shoxi. He could go back for Shoxi, but it's not going to happen. GMX faces him in the end, gets that kill, and now Nip, they're looking down the barrel at a potentially an eco. We have to see what the state of their money is right now. Uh, they could force it up, and I think they, uh, they will, in fact, force it up. So they do have just enough money for it. Fortunately for them, some of the other rounds they played just here, they, they ended up at least, you know, coming out of it with four or five members alive. So that's good news. 
Well, 5 7 in this first half here, and Epsilon are looking really strong. This is a powerful performance once again from the French team, and quite exciting to watch them play at this level. See if NIP can change the tide here, because if they lose this round, they will be echoing, and Epsilon will have uh, more than just a good half on their hands. Really quick rush to the B bomb site this time. Kyushima connects with the spray. Freiburg with a good return. He needs a lot more. Freiburg has to step it up huge. He's gonna go down, and now Fifi Flaren has shown up with the AWP. He's got that AWP. He can put the pressure on here if he can just find the angle to work, but Smoke's already gonna be going. Going down, that's going to be cutting this side up, making it more difficult for Nip to be effective. Kyoshima finds Get Right, and this is now that two on three scenario where Fiflarn is taking point, but he is not getting anybody to shoot. One good thing is that his position, he's basically cutting Epsilon off from that bomb site. Catches one man out in the opening, can't land the shot. And he keeps moving up, and now he's alone and in little middle of nowhere. He's going to go down. Kyushima is just on a complete tear. He's got 20 kills. The closest to him is 12 on exist. That is what's happening right now. Kyushima, I mean, the whole of Epsilon is playing well right now, but if Kyushima hadn't been doing what he's doing right here, this first half would be entirely different. Yeah, I mean, he's completely on a tear right now. This is something when you have the top tier, when a player starts to roll like this, it's so tough to deal with them. It really is so difficult when everything seems to be going right for Kyoshima. He's always getting his crosshair on the headshot, and that's just that's just how it is right now. And Nip, they keep getting cut up. It really seems like Epsilon have put a lot of work into this map. Like, they've really got it figured out because they're getting all the right smokes down, and they're forcing Nip into these situations where it's 1v2, 1v3, and odds are heavily going to be stacked Epsilon's way in those cases. So. When it comes down to it, Epsilon are just having a great T-half. They've really figured out how to make this map work for themselves. But this is a really good start to an eco round from NIP. They've picked up two kills and almost dropped SF as well, thanks to Forrest and Freiburg. Forrest could have easily got the kill on SF2, just hit, hit one more bullet, that would have been it. FXO creeping up, it's going to take down Fiflaren, who maybe should have been hiding a little bit more. And down the middle, I think, we do have Gerrite taking down SF, going for a second one. Gerrite can't connect. And now it's a 2 on 2 Exist hiding right at the edge of the smoke. Tries for the spray, not quite connecting, gonna go down. And Kiyoshima will pick up the kill, not surprisingly. Freiburg, 1 on 2, pistol in hand. Gets the AK at least. He has the AK now. But it's a 1v2, this is feasible here. Freiburg, is he gonna actually try and sneak his way out through this smoke? He's kinda dancing on the edge of it, and there you go. Gets through it, looking for an angle. If he could find the shot, this would be huge. He's trying to check the likely hiding spots here. But now he's kind of caught in a box, and Epsilon know exactly where he, where he is. He's still got plenty of time, though. That bomb has only just been planted. If he can somehow catch them off guard. And the problem is FX shows on the crossfire. As soon as Freiburg walks forward here, he's going to be walking right into the scope. There's no way he knows how to check this, so that will be the end of it. 9-5. So close for an IP in this eco round. I mean, it's a great round. Unfortunately, they needed to win it and not just to make it close. And they are going to buy it up this round. They will have the money to do that. But we're at the 15th round. And 9-6 right now sounds a lot better than 10-5. Than yeah, well, from what we've seen yesterday, 9-6 at least, you know, for the T side is a phenomenal first half here from yeah. uh, Epsilon. But then again, it's still Nip. And you don't count Nip out until some one, one, of the, one or the other has 16 rounds, right? This is has pretty much how it goes. Nip are absolutely capable of giving the same performance on the T side. So going into this, Epsilon are definitely the team that need the buffer, I think. They need to have a, fin a fantastic start because going into the T side, Nip are absolutely capable of just landing all the shots, Forrest or Fiflar, and they can really step it up here, so. It seems like Fiflar has found a, a bit of a castle of his own, more like a hay fortress, so it's really not that impressive, but still, I guess it's better than nothing. He's he moved out immediately. He's in him. a room. Now it just needs to be on fire. Exactly. I mean, hey. Wow, what is going on now? FX sure actually jumped down and actually took some damage early on, and Forrest is covering from behind the smoke here. SF. Winching forward, Fiflaren is right around this corner, so they're gonna try and check it. They will look as many places as they can, but they, they... see him. Oh, he does get him down. A great headshot from SF, and Fiflaren's position instantly compromised. Yeah, put, peeking forward again, and that's that's like timing right now for Fiflaren. It's just not really working out for him. He's walked into the crosshairs two times now, and that kind of weak that severely weakens the defense on A site, but it, more importantly, it weakens the defense on B site now because we've seen how important it is to have as many bodies as possible on the CT side on B site to just stop the push that can come rushing out. And they've been forced to rotate an extra man over to cover that uh, A site now, Nip. So it's going to come down to get right now. He's going to get flashed, but manages to turn away in time to negate it. In the meantime, his teammate Freiburg waiting on this A site. He needs to get in a position where he can stop the push. Get right goes down. GMX patiently waiting here. Freiburg looking for some feet to shoot. It's going to be a headshot instead. Superfighter going down. Eight seconds left. Seven seconds. They got to move quick here. GMX comes in. There's not enough time. Four seconds. They can no longer put down the bomb. All NIP have to do is hide. And Freiburg not going to hide from anyone. Takes down FXO and makes it 9-6 for the first half. 
And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The first half of this game over with. Second half's coming up any second. And there we see a shot of the players and the, and the crowd. crowd as well. Oh, and Navi, Zeus, Edward, everybody there. Absolutely. Hype. Look at that beard. That's a godlike beard right there. And Edward's been playing like a god too, man. He is so good right now. This tournament, last week, Edward's been having terrific performances. It's exactly what we want to see. Somewhere on this screen, there's a dev as well. There is just a, saying. There is a, a Valve developer down and there waiting. He didn't waiting. even smile either, man. He's got nerves of steel. He didn't give it away. So up to you guys to figure it out. And some focus coming out here from Epsilon. They are looking. Uh, they're looking forward to the second half, and I don't blame them. They do get a little bit of time to just adjust themselves, and they're not looking super excited, but I would say maybe hyper-focused. Hyper-focused. They have to keep their cool right now. I mean, Nip, same thing. We even saw, I mean, there's been frustration on Nip's side. I mean, we even saw Freiburg reaction from him throughout that half where he would kind of slump back in his chair. I mean, Nip cannot be happy with that first round uh, performance. Peter behind, I mean, look at that nervous twitch going on with his hand right now. I mean, the pressure is on. And not only because they're, they're we can say, I guess, going off of uh, the last maps that we had, you know, they're kind of behind already on this first map, but the pressure on them is basically, you know, you're the top team. You're the ones who are supposed to come to this tournament and dominate. You've made the finals of the first two majors. We expect you now to get into the finals again, essentially, and, you know, rightfully claim what is yours as the best team in CS history. That is everything on their shoulders. So, Epsilon are the guys who actually, you know, they have something to prove, but going into this group, Epsilon, we were expecting a strong performance, but for them to, to basically dominate Hellraisers and now have a great performance versus Nip, that's huge for them. It definitely is. And coming off of a really disappointing Gfinity tournament where they had a lot of internal issues and a lot of um, really frustrating experiences with, with the Gfinity tournament in itself, just, you know, from lack of sleep, other things yeah. like that. Um, I think they're feeling much better at the moment. So let's see. Second half is coming up right here. It's going to be NIP versus Epsilon. So welcome to the show, everyone. This is the ESL1 Cologne 2014 first match of day two. And this is to decide who goes out of the group first or who goes to play Hellraisers, so there's a lot on the line right now. This is huge, and this pistol round is going to be everything here. Epsilon ahead 9 to 6, and if they can pick up this pistol round, it gets out of control fast. So Nip, they have to start landing the shots. Get right already up here by uh, Skyfall, and he's actually going to get spotted out as well. Takes a little bit of damage there. Or not sure if he did. Looked like he did, but then again, GMX, no reaction from him. So it's kind of just get right making noise pretty much on this side of the map to, to kind of gauge the defense, see exactly how Epsilon are holding, if they're holding aggro or not. Sharks spots a couple of people, which is good news, because they already know Get Right's over there. So now they know that there's definitely a, a big spread in the terrorist forces, and they need to figure out exactly where to put their defense. And, uh, well, Kiyoshima and FXO are both dropping low, but no kills happening yet, and that is obviously the big difference here. Yeah, I like Forrest swat swapping between Burst Fire and not when he goes for the jump peak like that. You know, point blank, Burst Glock, he can do it. It's Forrest. He's got a pistol. He does magical things. Uh, Look at, look at Epsilon, they've stacked four members in this bomb site, and NIP could be walking right into it. This is actually a bit of a gamble from the French side, but I love it. Gerai, though, infiltrating the middle. SF is going to get the headshot, and that's the first kill of the round. And now NIP decide it's time to go. Fiflaren spots the corner. FX Joe should be going down here. Flash goes in, and Fiflaren picks up the kill. Uh, they keep rushing in. GMX and SF, and it's falling apart for NIP. Exist is going to go down, and Freiburg falls, and the Frenchmen stay alive. Super fighter with four kills. And Epsilon now. Oh, they're very close. That USP going to action. I mean, one shot, headshot with the CT pistols. Glock at range like that. You need two to do it. And Nip just getting caught. That's the thing. They're going in through that choke point from A Apartments. Epsilon making the right call, getting the info, noticing, okay, well, there isn't a whole lot of action going on here at B. Let's rotate an extra guy over to A. Okay, let's put two guys over to A now. And everything going right. They had four guys there holding solid, making sure that Nip could not get out of that choke. It's like they had him in a full Nelson, practically, you know, just like the illegal chokehold. That's exactly what Epsilon had going for them. But now Nip are trying to change it up, perhaps go to this B site. They did not get a plant in that pistol round either, so they're just going to be going for some pistols here in this round, seeing if they can't get any damage done. But GMX already starting off strong, picking up one. Yeah, Fexio will follow it up here. Some good kills coming in from NIP, but not sure it's going to be quite enough. For Freiburg is going to go down as well. Forrest and uh, Freiburg both falling to Superfighter, who picks up a triple kill to follow up on the quad kill he had last round. So that's obviously pretty good. Start to the second half here for him individually. No bomb plant for NIP, which means they will have to eco once more, making it uh, probably 12-6 before we start seeing rifles on NIP. And then the big question is, 
how are they going to be able to play this map on the other side? Slowly, patiently. Like, I really see Nip, you know, trying to go for a little plays like that in Pistol, where Get Right kind of, you know, plays a snake in the grass roll, does his thing, sneaks around the map because Cobble is huge. Maybe, you know, he can get behind enemy lines, infiltrates him, and then give some openings for Nip, but we'll see if that actually happens. Exist has now managed to sneak his way over here uh, into uh, Castle Balcony. Yeah, SF up close. Really good shots coming in here. He's going to go down eventually, Fufi Flaren. And Kiyoshima all the way in the back with a scout in hand as well. Got to be a little bit careful, but the backup is coming in from behind really quickly. And they weren't anticipating shocks here. He does get the one kill, picks up the second one, leaving Fufi Flaren alone. So pretty good rotation from Epsilon. A good kill actually comes in at the very end on Kiyoshima. A very expensive round for Epsilon here, and actually way too expensive. He's going to get the plant as well. You're right, he gets the bomb plant here. That is huge Sick play. Sick play from Fufi Flaren. This is big. Two kills for him, a plant. They've gotten three kills already in this round. This is massive money going Nip's way. This is really setting it up for that 19th round buy. This is best case scenario right now for Nip. If he could somehow find one more kill, that would be huge. This is now going to be Epsilon trying to sneak their way around. They're playing together, which is good. They're going to try and cover angles together, not let Fiflarn pick them off one at a time. But Fiflarn is playing this so well, listening to the in-game sounds. He knows somebody's defusing now. If he can get this kill, it'd be big, but he's not He's not quite able to do it with that P250. No, but you have to admire the movement of Fiflarn in this sense. I mean, yeah, the, the game sense is definitely there. And uh, that, was, that, was, that could have actually worked. If he got that first kill, the other guy would have either had to commit or stop defusing, and that would have been a really awkward situation. So that that came dangerously close. Absolutely in love with that play. Now it's 6 12 moving into the 19th round. Auto Sniper is picked up on Kiyoshima. And there's an AW here on Fiflaren. We'll have to see if NIP can somehow bring this back or if it's going to be Epsilon doing uh, coming out first in Group A. I'm curious where, um, and it is going to be at the back of B site. So Kiyoshima is really just going to kind of set up and try and cover some angles with that Scar 20. No AWP and no AWP for FXO either. So I'm really looking forward to when FXO can actually afford to get that sniper rifle and see what he's capable of on CT side cobble. Right now, we've seen what, what uh, Fiflarn is capable of. Now we have to see what he's going to be able to do here on the T side, if he can find an angle to work. But Nip are slowly infiltrating the A slope area right now, moving into A apps now as well. And FXO, he's, he's currently actually waiting up the ladder, not something we see too often. Oh, wants to pick off someone who's maybe carelessly just going to be strolling by. And NIP, they do have a bunch of people down here. And again, I think it's Get Right they have over by the B bomb site. So this is, seems like the standard setup for NIP on this map. The default position, just send Get Right B, see if anything happens. The rest are going to be creeping up towards the A bomb site. And can they deal with FX Job here? Actually, Get Right does pick up the opening kill there on GMX. So that's really good. FX Job's waiting. Timing is everything. He's going to be jumping down. Does make some noise, but not enough. Oh, oh are you, you kidding me? Then the, the from Arsis out, he only gets one more kill, but that might be enough. Absolutely brilliant that NIP are destroyed. That play is more than just a knife kill. That is humiliation, and that's exactly what Epsilon needed to put NIP very far down. Oh, man, and now you can see the satisfied smiles there. I think, uh, I think Epsilon are feeling like they've got this game. That was a huge round, and that's got to be soul-shattering for Nip. I mean, at that point, not only did you get knifed, but you just got eviscerated. You got completely closed in on sandwiched on slope. They never got out. Nip, that's that's a very tough round to come back from now, and they are still very far behind. So it has to be that one round at a time scenario. They have to pull a cloud nine basically right now. Yep, you're right. Uh, very similar situation in a way. NIP have been close a whole number of rounds, but um, this is. This I, is a pretty big comeback. I just love how FXO, you know, he kind of hesitates at the FAMAS and he's like, I'm going to do it. How, how many times do you get to knife somebody on the main stage at a major, right? Not that often. I guarantee you, Shocks is going to have a conversation with him afterwards saying, do not ever do that again. Ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever. You get Kiyoshi. the kill and that's it. You don't you don't try and take the risk and go for something like that. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah. You know, Shocks is not a fan of this stuff. He hates, I can he guarantee hates that. You. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. Sometimes controlling your troops is not as easy as it seems. Shoxy's kind of low. FXO taking a bit of damage, and Shoxy will still pick up a kill before he goes down to Exist. And now the push is on Exist with a good double kill. They need a lot more, and there's a firing squad. Forrest, the only one left here, one on three, and he's in a good position. If he only had a teammate now right now, it'd be beautiful. He goes down to SF, turns around, sees him through the smoke. 14-6, NIP, I think, are not going to be able to do this. They're going to have to eco now, or they could force it up. In fact, we're going to have a little bit of a pause coming in here, maybe some sort of issue. Technical pause, I see Freiburg waving his, uh, his arms around right now, so uh, we'll see if... Um 
Maybe it's a problem with his uh, screen or something like that. I'm not sure, but we'll see. we shall see what's going on here. We have the big picture now and see exactly what's going on for Nip, but it seems like they are the ones who have initiated the pause. We see Peta crouching behind. He's, I mean, talking, and Fiflarn and Getright are both looking back at him right now. So this is, this is something, you know, in case you're just tuning in right now and you missed the news, but Nip have now got a coach, and as we can see, he is actually on the, the voice chat with them right now. He's able to talk to them during the rounds. It's essentially like having a sixth man, because he's already told his teammates, or he's already told Exist, don't worry about making, you know, the calls as to what's going on down the line. Focus on your game. Focus on the calls that are happening in this round. I'm the one keeping track of the big picture. I'm the one who's going to be making sure that, you know, anything that Epsilon do, they get picked up. Epsilon, in the meantime, are just having a jolly old time right there. I mean, Shoxy, look at that smile. Yeah, this is, and they have good reason to be to be feeling this way right now, Epsilon. They're very, very close to being able to pull this through. First, First in the group. Seed. First yeah. seed in the group, and you are with Nip, you are with Hellraisers. That is, I mean, that is an achievement right there. That's a statement from Epsilon basically saying, well, uh, here we are, gentlemen. Uh, you know, G3 was not a fluke. We played very well there. We played very well at DreamHack Summer. Now you're going to have to start taking us seriously because uh, we, you know, if we take first seed in a group going into the playoffs tomorrow, it means that they're going to face a second seed team in the playoffs tomorrow. So they should have, you know, the, the uh, easier match. I mean, this is this is a huge opportunity for Epsilon to just come in big and make a statement. We'll see. Technical issues are obviously being sorted out as we speak, and the players are getting a bit of breathing room. If anything, this probably works out in favor of NIP. I mean, if you want to make a comeback, there's nothing better than having a bit of a, of a strange pause and then, of and a then tactical getting, puppy yeah, pause. Exactly, getting back into it. I don't think that's actually what NIP are doing. They don't really have a reputation for doing stuff like that. But um, that's what I mean, they, they don't. They, they've never been known to do that. So I'd be, I mean, we have no evidence to go to suggest that that's what's happening, basically. No track record. Okay, well, let's see exactly what happens here now as Nip are, they have six rounds, but they do have the money to get a pretty good buy going, and we are in live the round, 21 rounds on the board, and they are going to be moving into it. Nip, once again, sending Get Right over to the B side to try and scope things out, maybe get a, a pick, catch somebody getting greedy on Epsilon's side. It shocks you with an AWP right now, though, not FXO, which is very interesting, and Shoxy makes it work. He picks off the floor to start. Yeah, Shoxy proven time and again that he's perfectly capable, not just on this map, but on Dust2 or any other map, to pick that weapon up. So this is getting even more scary now for NIP as two scope rifles almost gets the kill on Forest and then just escapes again. Two more rounds for Epsilon and they will have done it. This is brutal right now. And this is, we've seen how effective this kind of hold is, but Get Right will find SF. GMX returns on Get Right, however, and that's the B side push coming in from Nip. Cleared out, Get Right, the sneaky snake gets caught in the trap, and now Epsilon, they have a man advantage, they have the health advantage, they have the gear advantage, and they have the firepower advantage. It's just gonna come down to leg legendary play from Nip. Forrest, we need performance, we need one of his performances right now. Yeah, but this is actually a thing that's been missing throughout this game. We've seen how Kiyoshima's been picking up incredible triple kills, but that kind of you know style has not come out in the same way for Get Right or Forrest or anyone else from NIP, and that's a big problem. GMX does go down here, but Freiburg, or so you exist, is gonna be alone in the one on three, gets picked off, Shoxy, too quick. Quick old shots, and it is a triple kill for him. 15 6 match and map point for Epsilon. Uh, map point. 150,000 people tuning in here for the first match of our group day here, the second day of Gamescom, the second major of the year. And Nip are on the ropes one round away from being forced to face Hellraisers for the second seed match. Epsilon Esports, one round away from one of the best performances that they've had so far on LAN. Making, making it out of the groups at the major first seed. So now we see Fiflarin just leading the charge. It's going to be a straight up change of pace. Going straight to B, but SF is having none of it. He gets one. Two quick kills come back in for Nip. However, Kyushima, he's still alive with the Scar 20, and he gets two. And NIP not really quick enough to realize that that was going to be the angle in Kyushima, not giving them any time to adjust, just moving up. He spots Exist, and that's going to probably be a kill. No, Exist with the headshot. And we're back into a 2 on 2 but they will pick up the bomb just for a second here. I think they saw FXO, but Exist is focused. Grenade rains in and takes him out. And now it is a 1 on 2 for Forest here. And this one is for the map. He's going to have to pick this up. He's got time for it, but does he have the aim? He's done the damage right now, and he's trying. He's currently caught, and there you go, Shoxy with the headshot. We'll close it out through the wall, and Epsilon will take first seed in Group A here at Gamescom. One of the strongest performances yet from this team, one of the up-and-coming teams, and this is huge. Yet another top-tier French team has now entered the scene here. They are in the playoffs tomorrow, and I mean, they, they look great, man. This is just huge for them.
Yes, it is. They do do absolutely fantastic. And on a new map as well, showing that they have also put in the uh, the homework to make sure that they can get this. They knew it was a risk that it, it could end up being on this map. And uh, obviously, the, it, whatever preparations they put in, it has paid off. We were talking about it at the beginning, right? Cobble was an option, especially with this uh, this pick band system, with how it works. You know, two bands per team, and then the remaining three maps, it's randomly picked. So, you know, Cash could be in there. That's a good map for Nip. There's other maps in there, but Cobble being in the pool makes it so that there is a one in three chance. They that was a map. That's what they had to Look. risk. And it comes down to Cobble to settle this. Look right here. I would not be surprised if this was the, the conversation where Shoxi says, no more knifing. Not ever again are we yeah. going to see anyone knifing anyone in this tournament, no matter what happens. I mean, 1500 bucks though. 1500 bucks is a lot of money, Anders. That is not what it's about. Not oh. for Shoxi. I am. I will ask him. I'll find out for you guys. And in, in, if we have a break and I have time, I will ask Shoxi well, exactly I, what this conversation is. If I'll we tell have you. an interview now with the players, uh, we'll, you know, we'll that, find that out needs to be a question that gets asked as well. But we, we shall see. I mean, Nip are going to be talking it over right now, just basically going over that game. What happened there? Because yeah. you know they they weren't able to really put it together for their CT half and so, going into the T half, it never really seemed to, to get the momentum. So say anything about Nip that you will, but the fact that they're actually talking like this and and having a, a conversation is a very good. Way Way of handling it if you're a team and you still have you know the rest of a major to play potentially you have another map yeah because um it's actually something that we saw at um at gfinity where some teams when they lost they just left yeah i mean they just walked outside not even together just some you know not gonna mention anyone but that's a uh, that's definitely a result that we saw yeah. so staying tuned is a, is a really good idea just uh, keeping it with them and now we're back on the camera, guys, so what a game. That's the thing, that's what we expect from Nip, really. I mean, they've been together for two years now. They just recently, like last week, had their two-year anniversary. Same lineup, best yeah. team in the world, best streak in CS history, best everything, basically. These guys are essentially the Tyrannosaurus Rex of CS. And yeah. Epsilon just managed to land the one in a million shot, basically, with that, with that blow dart to take them down. Well, the fact is the, the, the gap is closing between NIP and everybody else. And yeah. I would say at this point, it's not even really closing. It has closed now, well, not has. just between Nip and Epsilon, but between Nip and everyone else and Epsilon and everyone else, too. And this is why this major tournament is going to be just as good as it's been so well, far. It's going to be even better. Well, going we get into, to going the into these matches, right? We had uh, we had interviews up on HLTV and it was already uh, and it was all I mean, it was already OK. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, we are getting ready, so let's put it over to Scott. Take it away, Sir Scoots. Thank you, guys. Wow, what a first match of the day, that's for sure. I don't think a lot of people thought Nip would get upset. Uh, so obviously the next match is going to be Nip versus Hellraisers, and this is loser go home. Winner will come out of the group in second place. So, uh, you know, we're, we're used to Nip in the finals. Uh, they've been in the last two major finals, so obviously they've got a long road ahead of them to get back to those finals, let alone win it. So right after this commercial break, we'll bring you Nip versus Hellraisers. Thanks for stopping by.
Gaming-PCs und Notebooks mit neuester Hardware sofort nach Release gibt's bei One.de. Der Nummer 1 für Gaming in Deutschland. Riesige Auswahl, perfekter Service und schnelle Lieferung. Kauf schlau und freu dich auf PCs, Notebooks, Tablets und Zubehör für noch mehr Spielspaß. Geh jetzt auf One.de und klick dich rein. One.de. Your system, your choice.
PCs und Notebooks mit neuester Hardware sofort nach Release gibt's bei One.de, der Nummer 1 für Gaming in Deutschland. Riesige Auswahl, perfekter Service und schnelle Lieferung. Kauf schlau und freu dich auf PCs, Notebooks, Tablets und Zubehör für noch mehr Spielspaß. Geh jetzt auf One.de und klick dich rein. One.de, your system, your choice. Welcome back, folks, to the 2014 ESL1 Cologne Counter-Strike GO Championships. I am still Scott, and the next match is do or die time. We're finishing out Group A, and that leaves us with, again, the number one team in the world, NIP. Not getting any easier for them. Now they're taking on the number six team in the world in Hellraisers. Hellraisers obviously didn't have a great day yesterday. They fell to the lower part of this group. I think, in talking to Angel, they would rather have had a little revenge against Epsilon on that 1-16 uh, loss, but again, they're ready for Nip. A lot, as always, is gonna come down to the map choices this weekend. Uh, we just saw Cobble played, maybe we'll see Overpass, maybe we'll see Cobble again. 
Uh, again, NIP also has the addition of PETA, so during the break they've been in a serious powwow, just chit-chatting, probably talking about maps and obviously trying to figure out what went wrong with Cobble. Um, I imagine they would much rather play some of the established maps, both teams. But again, that's the advantage of this weekend, is if you have played one of these new maps and you're comfortable on it, that's where the veto meta game kind of comes into play. And, and you're going to play towards the strength of one of those new maps and hope that the other team doesn't ban both of them. Again, who knows what the maps are going to see. You'll see them when I see them. Uh, again, $250,000 on the line. First place taking home $100,000, thanks to the fans and the community of Counter-Strike that are opening those eSports cases. And again, all the way down to the last team here in 16th place, they will also take home some money, $2,000. So everyone who came to the event is at least going home with a couple thousand dollars in their pocket. Not a bad weekend. Again, casters are about ready, teams are getting set up. So once again, the delightful and gorgeous Anders and Semler. Thank you very much, Scott. Now we're ready with the losers match of this one. It's going to be either Hell Racers or NIP going through in similar. I mean, that's a surprise, isn't it? That, I mean, Epsilon have really shown something here. And now the question is, what the hell happens if NIP do not make it to the playoffs of this major tournament? Just to reiterate, at uh, DreamHack Winter, which was the first major tournament, they made yep. it and finished second against Fnatic. At uh, EMS1 Katowice, they ended up in second place, lost to Virtus Pro. If they don't actually make it to the playoffs this time, that would be a disaster. Is, yeah, exactly. And I was talking to uh, Get Right during the break. And going into Cobblestone, they felt very confident in it. They said that everything was going their way in practice, that they were just mauling teams. Nobody seemed to come close. But then speaking with Gary, he was like, it was a completely different beast when we got onto land. All of a sudden, it felt like they knew what to do versus us. He felt that his position in particular was compromised, that they were hard countering him, and that everything really just never really seemed to click. So we have to see if Nip now, on a new map versus Hellraisers, against whom they feel confident, are they going to be able to bounce back? Uh, the maps that they're going to get rid of pretty much here. I mean, I mean, it's done now, so we can go ahead and check get into it. But the maps that we expect to, to get rid of on Nip side, at least, are going to be Mirage and Cobblestone. They don't want to play Cobblestone again. They want to get rid of Mirage <laughs> because you don't want to face Hellraisers on Mirage, essentially. They're way too good at it. So Nip want to take this to the classics, like Inferno, Dust2. Get onto those maps and really take it to Hellraisers there. Yeah, but Hellraisers are a terrifying team on Inferno. The fact that they lost 16-1 to Epsilon is very, very deceptive in my opinion. If you looked at that score and think, all right, well, Hellraisers lost 16-1, they're probably not that good of a team. You're horribly wrong. Hellraisers played that match so well. The only thing that made them lose was that Epsilon were playing just as well yesterday as they were today. That doesn't mean Hellraisers were playing badly. So that is, if you just go off of that one result, you're making a really big mistake. So. The other thing is that Hellraisers have a history of beating NIP. Mm -hmm. And that is something you really cannot ignore. And if you take it to Dust2, Hellraisers is a team that is basically five aim stars. Yeah. That is not a fun, you know, you want to play a map where you can, you know, play nuke against them, but they're not going to play nuke, obviously. But if you could, you could try and beat Hellraisers by having better rotations, better teamwork, something like that. On, on, I don't think, on Dust 2, is different. Yeah, I don't think any team is going to want to play Nip on Nuke, basically. Like, pretty, pretty much it's like a veto map versus Nip. Like, you don't, you just don't play them on Nuke. Maybe, maybe but if it, Dignitas. If it goes to Inferno, oh, okay, maybe Dignitas. But, like, if it goes to Inferno, if it goes to Dust 2, actually, I think that Nip would be happy to go for Dust 2. Because their Dust 2 play, I mean, they are solid on the map. They're confident on the map. And I think that they can get some work done. Because Piflon with the AWP already, I feel like that is that is pretty much his map. He has really shown strong performances on Nuke with that sniper rifle. And get right, I mean, all these guys just know how to play the map so well. So if it does go to Dust2, I think Nip aren't going to be too displeased by that. But, you know, right, Inferno. Inferno would actually be good for Nip as well, seeing as how Hellraisers, yeah, sure, we can't look too much into that. I mean, really, no. Epsilon played like the match of their life yesterday. But still, that's going to go in the back of Hellraisers' minds thinking, well, the last time... It didn't really go our way, so, and Nip are good, and... and uh, the other thing to consider is that it's not entirely in their control either. I mean, we sort of end up talking about it as if though they can actually choose the map, which true. they can't. It's a random between the, the last three maps in the in the selection, so that does make a big difference here. Obviously seeing Markolov uh, on screen right here and Kucha right next to him. Mm -hmm. um, absolute legends, not just in Global Offensive, but in the whole history of, uh, of, uh, of, of Counter-Strike. Uh, they've really been coming to life as well in Hellraisers. Like, Doja is, you know, Basically, that man who's really expected to do a lot for Hellraiser's the entry frag is like, get into their face, get those frags. That's Doja, but Markolov, Kutcher, Angel, Adrian in particular. Adrian, he doesn't have 120 ping, Anders. He doesn't have a wooden PC. He's on land now, and when he's on land, Adrian comes in big. He does damage. So the, everybody on this team, you're right when you say it's like it's five aim stars. I mean, five of these guys are just yeah. capable of taking any kind of fight. 
They definitely are. But look, guys, as we're sorting out the last technical issues, we are going to go to a really quick commercial break. So it'll just be a few seconds and we will be right back. So don't go anywhere. Invite your friends and we'll be back in a second.